Hello and welcome to the Science Today. I'm Charlie and I'm Lewis. Today's programme is a special edition in which we look at how the periodic table, the chart we all know and love, was developed. The periodic table is essential part of modern chemistry, but how was it discovered and has it changed since it was first made? Here to help us with, here to help us we have some special guests from the past 200 years, but first here's our resident science historian, Joe. Welcome to the show. We have seen you for a few weeks. Have you been busy? Not too busy. Just preparing myself for today's show. Right then, Joe. According to the modern periodic table, there are about 100 elements. Has this always been the case? Actually, about 3,000 years ago, we only knew of 10 different elements. These included carbon, sulfur, copper, silver, gold, iron, Tin and lead. Well, that's not that many. We did. We discover the rest. This is the thing you see during the next two hundred twenty two thousand seven hundred years. We didn't real really discover that many new ones. Mainly zinc, which was discovered in India, and platinum which was discovered in Central America. When did we actually start to build up the elements that we know today? It wasn't until the 1700s that scientists really became interested in elements. This was the main time of discover, and by 1860 we had now recorded and observed 60 different elements, but this was helped a long way by the work of a scientist from Manchester called John Dalton. Well, that's really lucky because our next guest is the one and only John Dalton. <laughs> John, welcome to the programme. Thanks, Charlie and Lewis. I'm really happy to be here. OK, John, tell us what you were doing in the early 1800s. Well, at the time I was a science teacher in Manchester and in my spare time I was doing a lot of experiments on gases. Did you find anything interesting when, when you were doing the experiments? Well, I came up with the theory that all elements were made of tiny particles and I called these particles atoms. I also discovered that these atoms have a certain mass of for a certain element and I even worked out some of these masses. Wow, John, that must have been difficult, especially with the technology that you had then. Anyway, let's move on to our main guest today. Everyone, put your hands together and welcome Dimitri and the way. Now, just in case our viewers have not come across the work of Dimitri Mendeleev. Before, can you tell us a little, little bit about your main discovery? Okay. In 1869, I was working on a lecture at university in Russia. At the time, they discovered about 50 elements, but they were not organized into any order. So using some of the some of the information from the great John Dalton, I put some information about each element and separate the and I was into a separate piece of paper. What did you do with all them pieces of paper, Dimitri? Well I started to arrange the cards in to an order by protesting that we no. Finally, I found out at a uh, uh, an arrangement that worked 
but and all 50 elements fitted into the chart that I predicted. But what happened when other people found new elements? When I made the periodic table, as I decided to call it, I left a small spaces to see if I found a new element. So I predicted that there were some protocols that these elements would have. Did these predictions work to make them? Well, I mean, two, five, I just looked at someone else about, about Paul. Yeah. We might just do that. Everyone, welcome Paul, Emily, Billy, the the Bosley. <laughs> I was working in 1875 in Paris and I discovered what was to become a new element, Gaudium. Did it fit into Dimitri's period table? Not at first, but when I re... Is it rejected? Rejected oh. my observations and calculations, I found that it... Did, I found that it then it did in fact fit into one of the spaces that Dimitri had left behind. Are you telling us that if it fit perfect perfectly into the period, period the table that Dimitri had made? Yes, it fitted into the table right next to zinc. You do know that this is not the only time. It happened, don't you? Wasn't it? Do you, do you tell us more than Paul? Well, a few years after, after me, a Swedish scientist discovered scand scandium, and this had the exact properties to fit next to calium. And in 1886, a German scientist found the same thing happened for the element he had just discovered. Ger Germanium. Germanium. It fitted. It fits into the space next to Gavin. Wow, Dimitri. You are truly a genius. Dimitri's periodic table worked, but has there been any changes to it since? It was first made. Let's ask Catherine <laughs> and modern scientists for their opinion. We have heard a lot about how good Dimitri's periodic table was, but was it really that good? Mostly yes, it was good. However, there have been a few changes. Mercury had to be moved because it had been put in the wrong group. It was first put with copper and silver. When we know when we now know it goes with zinc and cadmium. Well, if that was the only mistake, Dimitri must have made a good job then. He also left a whole group of elements, noble gases. But we can let him off for this, as they hadn't been discovered yet. Well, there we have it. Dimitri's work was once of genius. His periodic table fitted perfectly. With the scientists knew about elements and allow him to predict correctly the properties of elements that had not yet been discovered. Amazing! We, we would like to thank today's guests for the most interesting discussion and hope to see you all again soon.